2023 winter CFL meetings one-on-one -on -one with Saskatchewan Rough Riders head coach Craig Dickinson, who's been teaching me a little bit about snow and the mountains and cross-country skiing, downhill skiing, snowboarding. I feel like this gets talked about, you know, a little bit, but you're really into this, like, you're good. And apparently there's some other CFL people that are maybe even better. Yeah, there's a, there's a small little group in the CFL that likes to get out and ski and snowboard. Kill them from Calgary's a really good snowboarder, old Pete from Toronto, Costanza, he knows how to ride. I think Dinwiddie knows how to ride. So, you know, one thing, if you live in Canada, you coach in the CFL about six months of the year, you got this white stuff on the ground, so you might as well figure out how to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, might as well make friends hey, with it, right? <laughs> might as well, when in Rome, right? Yeah. <laughs> Learn how to ski, you live in Canada. <laughs> you gotta navigate some of the bumps on the mountains and that'll be the way that I'll talk about the offensive coordinator search that the Rough Riders had from the outside. And I wanna get your perspective on this, obviously. You had some people um, that sort of turned you down, maybe didn't want to interview for the position, want to stay with the teams where we are at. They interviewed with you. There were some other guys that, that turned it down. Ultimately, you land on Kelly Jeffrey. What was that process like for you on the inside? And how do you think it was viewed correctly or incorrectly from the outside? Yeah, well, I think the one thing I learned, Justin, from that is you probably, when you have a job to fill, you probably better just throw a wide net. And what I mean by that is we liked a couple of guys, three or four that we liked. And I just didn't, you know, and I liked, I've been coaching up here a long time, so I know a lot of, of coaches, and there's a lot of good ones. And I like a, a lot of them. And, uh, but the reality was we didn't want to waste time by interviewing guys if we felt like we had a guy or two that we liked and we felt was a good fit. Um, but as we went down that road, it just didn't work for one reason or another. And then we tried to throw the net out a little wider near the end, and that's when we got some pushback and some guys that, that declined, you know, wanting to be interviewed. So that was the, the lesson I think I'd learned from that is uh, we had good candidates early on. Kelly was, I think, the first interview we had, and he was the first guy I thought of from the get-go uh, for the offensive coordinator job. And after that, I just wanted to make sure we did our due diligence and talk to as many people as we could and uh, and then come down to a decision based on having a body of evidence as opposed to just one or two guys. So um, I think, think from the outside in, it probably looked a little rougher than it was. From an inside point of view, we felt like we had a good candidate all along in Kelly, and we just wanted to make sure we did a good job of visiting with as many folks as we could before we came to a decision. That's why I wanted to ask you from the inside perspective, because I think a lot of people from the outside and mainly being the Rough Rider fans felt like, oh, this guy's turning us down or this guy doesn't yeah. even want to interview with us. But you at least have to go ask the question. Yes, absolutely. Knowing that you have a guy that you really like there who happens to be a Bruce Willis doppelganger. <laughs> well, uh, with hair, with hair. <laughs> uh, Kelly's a good coach, He's been a lot of places. But you're right, from the outside, here's the thing. you. We just want to visit with people, and and uh, and if they're not interested in visiting, that doesn't necessarily mean they had the job or didn't have the job. But from the outside looking in, as soon as the word gets out that that so and so is not interested in talking with us, all of a sudden it's like they turned us down. Well, that's not always the case, and uh, you know a lot of a lot of guys are happy where they're at, and we're happy for them. Um, and a lot of times you interview people, and and the conversation is nothing more than they they're happy where they're at, and that's as far as it goes. But from the inside, I will tell you this, we felt good about Kelly from the get-go, and uh, we were never in a, in a panic mode from the inside looking out. And how do you feel about Kelly Jeffrey going into his first year being an offensive coordinator with you going into your last year on your contract? It's gonna be fine. You know, everybody's in a, on a one-year deal for the most part in pro football. It is what it is. I think Kelly's got uh, a lot of great ideas. I think he's super keen on rolling up his sleeves and getting to work. And we're going to surround that offense with a good staff. You know, we've got a couple more hires to announce in the next few days, but we've got a good staff with proven coaches and and with a little bit of a chip on our shoulders, to be quite honest. We feel like we are a better team than what we showed last year, and we're going to work hard this year to, to, to prove some people wrong. Might Naaman Roosevelt be one of those coaches? Yeah, he's one of them. Yeah, he's going to come in and help us out. And, you know, we like I said, the names have been out there already. We'll announce it when we get everybody together. But uh, we feel like we've got a good, strong staff, and we're ready to get to work. Jeffrey was pretty adamant. He was obviously asked a bunch of questions about the quarterback position, talked about Cody Fajardo, felt like the Riders could win a great cup with Cody Fajardo. 
So where do things stand? I know you've had some communication with him. Are the Riders making a push to try to re-sign him before well, free agency? no. The answer's no, Justin. And But but never say never. You know, that's the one thing about free. It's not like a relationship where you break up and you just, just go your separate way. The reality is we don't know who's going to be available in February, and Cody doesn't know what teams are going to be in the market for a quarterback in February. So like it or not, we both need each other still a little bit right now. And uh, and we're gonna we'll cross the bridge when we need to. Um, there'll be guys that sign between now and the start of free agency that we maybe felt like we're gonna be there that aren't now. Um, but we've got to put a quarterback out there that can run the system Kelly wants run, and, and we'll continue to visit with Kelly and find out what that looks like. And the reality is, we want to have a veteran quarterback, whether that be Cody or one of those other guys that happens to be available. We're gonna have a veteran quarterback in camp, but not to not not to have the job to compete for the job. It's going to be a competition this year. That's going to be the one difference. You'll see a lot more of a competition for jobs this year because we feel like we've got to we've got to get better at a lot of spots. And the best way we know how to do that is to make it a competition. So fair to say, from the Rough Riders' perspective, Cody would likely get to the free agent market. There's a high percentage that's going to happen. Yes. And if that happens, as you said, and you come back together then how could that all work? Because you guys were so high on him before. He was the franchise guy. He was at one point the highest paid player in the league. And then now the team is willing to at least go to free agency and see what's there. So yeah, how could that relationship I mean, it'll work? Be t it'll be a little bit of a, a, a struggle. There's no doubt. But, you know, relationships are, are constantly evolving. And, and it's no different than my relationship with the club. I'm on my last year too, right? Everybody has something to prove. And we hope that if Cody's back with us, which is a, a big maybe, he's got something to prove. He's got to, you know, he's got to want to go out there and prove that last year was a fluke, that it was a, it was an anomaly, and that he's a better quarterback than that. Just like our football team has to go out next year, Justin, and prove 2022 wasn't the Saskatchewan Rough Riders that we're all about, that we're a better team than that, and we're looking forward to proving that in 2023. In talking to Jeremy O'Day and Jason Moss, I asked them similar questions. That if you would have sat Cody after he had that initial injury to his knee, could that have been more beneficial for him and perhaps the team? Do you look back on that decision and think maybe it could have been different, or you're yeah, you happy with yeah, that? Possibly, one? but here's the thing: you just got to go with what your medical people say. You know, I'm not a doctor, and nor do I claim to be or want to be. And when they say he's good to go, then you believe them and you trust them. And when Cody says I'm good to go, then you got to trust him as well. Um, you know, the, the exception to that, I believe, is the head injury. That's where I think the coach has to be a little more cautious because those are ones that you don't want to mess around with. But something that has to do with his mobility or his throwing mechanics, if the player feels like he can play effectively and the medical staff gives him the green light, I think as a coach, you, you just got to go with the information you have. One of the other big ones on offense would be Duke Williams. Do you envision him being in green and white, resigning? Don't or No, don't know. I haven't talked to Duke lately, but I know he's got an ankle. He's got to get fixed up. Um, but when he's healthy, I mean, he's shown he can be, if not the top guy in the league, one of the top guys in the league. So we'll see where it goes. Um, you know, that's, that's a decision Jeremy and I will have to make. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Pete Robertson was really great for you at rush end when he was healthy, getting after the quarterback. Is he one of the priorities on defense? He's a guy we've talked to, and he knows he knows we like him, and we like to get him back. So, um, you know, hopefully Pete feels the same way about us that we feel about him. We like him. We think he's a good football player, good in the locker room, and uh, we'll see where it goes. And, and the the tricky part is, like you said, that at some point you gotta. We, we got a lot of holes to fill, um, but we're going to try to fill them with our own guys as best we can before we get to the uh, the deadline. What was that like in 2022 to go through the season now that you look back at it? There was so much talk about the Rough Riders hosting the Grey Cup, and then you had that start. I believe it was 4-1, and one, and a lot of people are thinking, well, here we go again. We're going to go to the West Final and have at least a shot to get to the Grey yeah. Cup. How do you look at the season now that you've had a little time to digest it? You know, uh, I, I, the only thing I would say is this. I would it possibly change maybe the motivation in terms of like, we wanted to come out of the gates fast, which we did. Then we had a couple of injuries and we just lost our rhythm. And, and I think the one thing I, I learned from that is it's, it's such a long season, Justin, that if you, if you go too heavy in, in, in the start and, and maybe, you, maybe you hit some rough spots, maybe the guys lose a little bit of confidence. So 
I'm going to try my best this next season to really emphasize it's 18 games. And whether we start off 6-0 and or 0-6, you still got 18 games. Now, we certainly don't want to start off 0-6, but it's a long season. And I think maybe I put a little too much pressure on them early. And then, and then when we lost confidence, we weren't able to get it back. But, um, you know, every season's different. We're going to have a lot of different faces, a lot of new faces coaching, a lot of new faces playing. And I think um, I can speak for the coaching staff, at least. We're really excited about getting started because we feel like we got something to prove in 2023 that we're a better team than what we finished 2022. And we're looking forward to getting out there and doing it. And then I think partway through the season, there were some quotes that you had about the players that you felt like were taken out of context with three down nation. Yeah. So let's just get on the same page here. Yeah. I mean, we, we've talked about it, but how do you feel those quotes were dispersed, not only by us, but in the media? And what did you actually mean by that? Sure. Well, it was after the Edmonton game. And I felt like we were, after that game, we were in trouble because we only had, we had four games left, I think. Three of the four were on the road. We needed, we needed to beat Edmonton at home for us to make the playoffs. We didn't. And the way we lost that game was really disheartening. So anyway, I was trying to light a fire under the team a little bit. You know, if you guys want to go down, um, you know, this is an opportunity to, to go one of two ways. You either get worse or you get better. And I was hoping we'd get better. Um, but the comments were, you know, I just didn't think we were very good at the time. I felt like we had a, the group in the room that could get better and that had the ability to get better. But that's, that's where that went. I just didn't feel like we were playing very good football at the time, and we weren't. We'd lost four or five in a row at the time. So, um, you know, I, I was doing everything I could at that time, Justin, to try to motivate the group. It, it didn't necessarily work that way, and we ended up losing our last four. And, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully uh, we can all learn from that. Um, I will say this. I'm going to be honest every time when somebody asks me what I think of of the performance of the team and the coaches, I'll be honest with you. And I just didn't think we were playing very well at that time. And that's what I expressed. That's what I think a lot of Rough Rider fans appreciate. And I know a bunch of people in the media as well, is that you're honest. If we ask you a question and you either don't have an answer or you don't want to answer, you just flat out say no comment. But if you have an answer, you'll give it. Where does that come from? I don't know. Sometimes I think that serves me maybe not so as well as it should, but you're right. I have a hard time. Um, I don't have a very good poker face, so if you ask me an opinion of something and I have it, I'll usually share it. Um, I don't know. I've just never been good at coming up with, with a spin or a different, different answer to try to throw somebody off. So I, I do tend to be really straightforward and to the point, and sometimes that's good. I think people respect that, but other times it can, it can uh, it cause some hurt feelings as well. So I'll try to be a little more a little more considerate when I when I express my displeasure with the team. But the reality was, pro football is a rough business. You're, you're paid to win games. You're paid to win games as a player. You're paid to win games as a coach. And if you're not, there's usually going to be some accountability uh, involved in that. So the reality is we're, we signed up for a business where winning, winning talks. And uh, we've got to make sure we're aware of that and committed to doing that in 2023. Let's get your honest opinion on this. What do the riders have to do in 2023 to get back in competition to be that top team in the West and to a West final in the Grey Cup, yeah. based on your review of last year? We got to do a lot. We were a long ways away last year. Um, we got to get better on the offensive line, for sure. That's one. Uh, I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be the, a big part of it, Justin, because I think you'll see quarterback play improve as a result. I think you'll see uh, the flow of the offense improve as a result. So that's one. We've got to get better on the offensive line. And then two, defensively, we've got to find a way to keep quarterbacks in the pocket. I felt like early we did a great job of pressuring quarterbacks. And then as we started getting a little beat up on the D-line, I felt like uh, it affected our old defense. So those would be the two, the two glaring points. Same philosophy I had when I came in in 19. Be good on the offensive line, be dominant on the defensive line, and then the rest usually takes care of itself. What's it like for you walking around Regina or even anywhere in Saskatchewan after that season? Well, you know what? Most most people are pretty good, believe it or not. You know, there's a few people that will express disappointment in how the year went. But everybody knows, like, there's two teams playing. One team wins and one team loses. And, and we do our best to make sure we're on the winning end, end of that. And it just didn't happen in 2022. So um, we're going to work hard. The Saskatchewan... Rough Rider fans, Rider Nation can be uh, 
rest assured that we're going to we're going to do everything we can to put a good team out there in 2023 and do everything we can to have the best year we possibly can. Thanks for sharing your perspective on it. Enjoy shredding that pow, as they say. Appreciate <laughs> Thanks, you. Thanks, my man. We'll see you. <laughs>